So I've been watching videos today, and um, one thing that I found was there's um, a user na um, who's, who makes quite a few videos about Wicca, but he's himself Christian, and I believe he pronounces his name Shazuo. I'm not sure. It's S H A Z O O L O. He made a video quite a long time ago, um, and then made a, a more recent one, which I, I can't say I have watched yet, but I watched the older one, about um, Gerald Gardner and some of the foundational ideas about Wicca, um, and being that he is the founder of Wicca, um, you know, how do we feel about some of those things, for example, that Gardner was a homophobic? Well, um, I don't really think it matters to most Wiccans. Um, and the reason is, is that there really is no central Wiccan authority. Um, just as there's no central Christian authority as well. So, I mean, some people might argue that it's the Pope, but then, you know, non-Catholics will say, no, I don't follow the Pope. Um, Lutherans will say that it's Martin Luther, um, for example, that, that is the, you know, um, central authority of their faith. Well, you see, within Wicca, there are, are what we call traditions or denominations as well. And there is no central authority on Wicca as a whole, on tr specific traditions, perhaps. Um, for example, Gerald Gardner would be the central authority on Gardnerian Wicca. Um, for example, um, the Budapest would be the central authority on Dianic Wicca. Um, we could go on and on and on. Um, you know, reclaiming Starhawk, you know, um, and, and, and so forth and so on. And what it comes down to it is that most Wiccans who are solitary and don't belong to a tradition, they are the central authority of their path. So I am the central authority of my path you know, um, and other solitary Wiccans are the central authority of their paths. Now, does that mean that they don't recognize um, other people who've written about Wicca? No. In fact, if you look at a Wiccan's bookshelf, you know, like if you look at my bookshelf right now, here, I'll bring over to my book. So here is my bookshelf, and there's part, and there's more books, and well, that's a V for Vendetta figure. And there's more books, and that's supplies. That's part of my altar. More books. Crafty stuff. Oh, look. More books. Oh, and that's a picture from my wedding. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. There is me and my husband back when he was a long-haired freak um, at our wedding. Yeah, our wedding photos are all over the place. Um, that right there is my first piece of celebrity swag covering up some of my books that are in the background there, but there's more books. Um, and, and you get the idea. Oh, and there's a bookshelf behind me too, but I'm not, I can't turn around without hurting myself. So, um, those are most, most of my books. And most of them are on Wicca by different authors. Um, yeah, they're not all Wiccan books, but many of them are. Um, you know, I've got Deborah Lip up there. I've got uh, Michael Jordan up there. Not the basketball player. Um, he, he wrote a book called Encyclopedia of 2500 Gods, which I love. I've got Adam McCoy up there with the fairy folk. Um, I've got A.J. Drew up there. Um, you know, I've even got a Civil Ravable folk book up there. Um, you know, in the other bookshelf I showed you, you, may, you might have noticed that I have uh, the book The Law by Aleister Crowley, um, and so forth and so on. Um, and, and there are some fiction books mixed in there. Um, I also have Uncle Bucky's Big Red Book, and the Big, Big Blue Book in there somewhere as well, too. And, um, of course, Buckland's Book for Life, which I like a lot. So anyway, um, what does all this mean, or why do you care? Um, the point is, is that um, we have influences to our path, and those people, you know, that I mentioned are influences to my path. Do they dictate that to me? Absolutely not. Are they the authority of my path? Absolutely not. 
Um, if you if you um, you know join a coven and you have a priest or priestess, are they the authority of your religious path? Absolutely not. And people might disagree with me in that and say, no, if you go there for direction, they are the authority of your path. And I say, no, no, no. They um, are, may be, you know, they, they may help you in, you know, for example, you know, um, discovering different ways to, to think about the elements, so forth and so on. Hey, look, there's a cat back there. Hi, kitty. That's Freya. Um, so, uh, they, they, they might, you know, help you on your learning path and they direct your ritual, but that does not make them the authority of your path. You are the authority of your path. And um, when it comes to, you know, like people from the outside, I think one of the, you know, things about, you know, like Christians is Christians are used to a, their priest or pastor or whatever having a little bit more authority over how they interpret things. Um, you know, um, if they say, you know, how do I interpret this specific passage of the Bible? Um, you know, the, 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 the priest or pastor will usually interpret it for them. Um, a good high priestess says, well, how do you think it should be interpreted? How do you think that the elements should be interpreted? How do you think the law of three should be interpreted? You know, um, that those, those interpretations are up to you. And it's helping them find critical thinking skills to get those ideas for themselves and to get the, the experiences for themselves, which, which is, you know, a high priestess's path to me or high priest's path to me. Um, so, you know, when it comes to um, authority and Wicca, and, and this can be outlined, you know, this is outlined in the principles of Wiccan belief too. There is no central authority, but we do recognize those people who teach and give of themselves. And that's, that's you know, I think it sums it up pretty well that, you know, Gardner is not an authority. In fact, he got a lot of stuff wrong, and we admit that. And the, the thing is about Wicca is that it is an old religion, but also a new one. And we understand that not everything came from the old religion, because we understand that some of it came from Aleister Crowley, and some of it came from Adam Lovatsky, and all these other people who were around at the time. And um, that it would be unfair to say that, that uh, that Gardner really created a religion as much as he took elements of different things and brought them together to form a religion. Um, you know, th but those, those elements already existed, you know. Um, Joseph Campbell already, you know, had you formulated the whole idea of, you know, uh, um, the, the hero with a thousand faces and stuff like that. So, what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, if somebody says, well, Gardner was a homophobe, or Gardner didn't get everything right, how can you justify being a Wiccan because Gardner didn't get everything right? It doesn't make a difference. Because Gardner is not you, and Gardner is not a prophet. Um, and, and Gardner is not the authority of your Wiccan path. You are. And taking, taking control of that authority, that's your job. You know, um, and I think that when you're when you're new and you're starting off in your Wiccan, you might listen to to others more. But as you gain confident in your knowledge and confident in your experiences and your abilities and your beliefs, you become the authority of yourself. And I think that um, it's it's very empowering in that way. Anywho, this video is already eight minutes long, and I rambled, and I apologize. But um, I think you can uh, kind of get the idea.